love to sing this song. I love to play this song. And uh, I hope you enjoy it this morning as much as I enjoy playing it. Amen.
Praise the Lord. And as we're in the house of God today, this December, it starts and marks our Christmas season. And you know, we need to know that God had a message, that God had a plan of salvation for His people. And that as He did, guess what? It came to pass. Amen. Through the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sent through a virgin birth. But as we start this message this morning, the message title is an angelic message from Gabriel. You see, it starts off and God even had a plan to send a messenger before the Messiah. And starting in verse 1 of chapter 1 in Luke, it says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth the order in order and declaration of those things which are most assured believe among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the Word, it seems good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write these things in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to You this morning, Lord, just let the Holy Spirit begin to minister to our hearts. Father, let us have a, a faith that wells up within us today, God, that we can for certain ourselves share our faith with others in a way, God, that they would receive it, believe it, and have acceptance through Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For it's in His name that we pray. Amen. Amen. One of the things here is that Luke was writing to Theophilus. Well, the meaning of that word Theophilus or that name, I found out in a couple of different places. One of the things was one who loves God and one loved by God. Guess what? God loves us. I don't care what your name is. God loves you. Amen. And as it, you know, Luke was trying to give him a message in which that he was having certainty and assurity in the gospel of Jesus Christ. As it goes on here in verse 5, and it says, And there was in those days Herod, the king of Judah, and certain priests named Zacharias, and of the course of the Abbai. And his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her, her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. I'm just going to stop there for one minute. Do you know they loved God? They were faithful to God in their service to Him. It just wasn't something that they went and did on the Sabbath day. No, they were servants of the Lord and they loved Him with the purity of heart. Some of the other things that through my studies was that how that, you know, they were not like the scribes and the Pharisees of that day who said one thing and yet went and did another. No, they had a sincerity in them that they were faithful and committed to their faith. You see, we today need to be faithful and committed to our faith that we can see and watch God at work in our lives. Because this is not a game. You know, it was mentioned earlier, even about where our nation is at right now and how torn that we truly are. Well, guess what? If we were focused and we were centralized on the things of truth and the things that were really important, we wouldn't be divided the way that we are because we would be a nation one under God Amen. and doing His will and not our own. That's right. But you see, they were solely minded towards setting in their service to God. But guess what? I'm going to have to paraphrase some of this this morning to get through everything I want to. But you see, they didn't have any children and it says there that they were well stricken in years. Well, let me just bring that down to terms for you. They were old. They were old, Johnny. I'm telling you. Well, I just, you know, I just felt led by the Spirit. <laughs> they were past the age of childbearing. And you know, once you get past that age of childbearing, if you have not had your children, well, you know that 
you are not probably going to have. Statistically, you are not going to have children at that stage, and especially back then. And But you see, God had a different plan because God takes the impossible and He makes it possible. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. He is the God of the impossible. Right. <laughs> Amen. That makes it possible. There again, in verse 8, I'm going to pick up there again, and it came to pass that while He executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course according to the customs of the priest's office his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and he, and the whole multitude of the people were praying uh, uh, yeah were praying without at the time of incense and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now I'm going to kind of put this here. I was showing Johnny earlier that I had a picture back in my office that, you know, really the altar of incense would be somewhere out here, but it wasn't in the Holy of Holies. You see, that was on in. That was on in where they went. But out here, it was the holy place. You see, so even at that, when the priest came in, they would burn incense and it was his time, his turn to burn incense. And so he goes in. But what was the significance? It says the people were without praying. Well, why were they without praying? Because ultimately I put in your notes here for those of you that have some notes this morning. It says incense was burned in the temple twice daily. And when the people saw the smoke from the burning incense, they prayed. The smoke drifted heavenward, signifying or symbolizing their prayers ascending to God's throne. So this was symbolic in that whenever that they burned incense and the smoke went out and went up and the people were praying, it was that their prayers were going up to God. Amen. So the priest was in there burning incense because it was his time, but you see, it was also his time for a miracle. Yes. It was also his time for a manifestation of the power of God to do something miraculous in his life because you know what? He was deemed worthy. Amen? Amen. You know, there's something to be said about faithfulness. Yes. Amen? Amen? Faithfulness to the house of God. Faithfulness to God Himself. That we will be faithful to Him and that we are expecting. Do you come to church expecting? I'm just going to ask you that. Do you come to church expecting or do you just come expecting to hear a good message and then get up and walk out? Or do you truly want God to move in your heart, move in your life, and to feel the power of the Holy Spirit? We felt the power of the Holy Spirit in Sunday school this morning. Amen. Because you know what? Our hearts were in such a, pr a place and direction that we were all in one mind and in one accord. And you know what? We were in prayer. Amen. Amen. I think our smoke went up before the Lord. Amen. Amen. You see, in, in this here, Zacharias, he went into this holy place to burn that incense, but when he got in there, whoa, wait a minute. There is somebody standing at the right side of that. <clears throat> and as that, that angel that was there, he had a message for Zachariah, and he begins to deliver the message. He begins to deliver that message and he said, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Here we find out to where his name is going to be called John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be glad in the and, or for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. We're going to find this out this morning too that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary and that how that she was pregnant with the Christ child that the babe leaps within her womb. So the angel is already saying, look, your son that you're going to have, he's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And that's exactly what happened. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. How many of us will turn somebody to the Lord our God? Turn with me, if you would, to Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. 
In the Old Testament, that is the last book of the Old Testament before we get into the New. Verse 17, this is kind of burst off of 17, but verse 5 and 6 out of chapter 4 in Malachi says this. I'm going to wait till you get there. I hear pages turning. You know, we need to hear pages turning because, you know, we need to know our Bibles. We need to know not only what we believe, but why we believe it. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Now this was prophecy out of the Old Testament, but here in chapter um, 1 of Luke, in verse 17, it says, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of people that believe in reincarnation. No. The Bible does not teach reincarnation. He came in the spirits of Elijah. Okay? When he came in the Spirit, he was just like him. Whenever that I took the church here, Brother Alvin was the pastor, and I don't know how, how many times that I've said it. i got to have a little drink of water here. Forgive me. But you know, whenever the church hired me, they really just hired somebody that they already had just younger. <laughs> Brother Alvin and I was of the same Spirit. We had the same likeness. We love to tease, we love to joke, but we also love God. Amen. Amen? And you see, this is what this is like, that He came in the Spirit and the power of Elias in the New Testament in Luke is what it says. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angels, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel. There's only two names in the Bible is Gabriel and Michael, that is, angels that are spoken of. Now there's all kinds of angels that are in the Bible, but those that are named are only Gabriel and Michael. But we see this is Gabriel here, and he said, I stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee to the wit, to the show thee these gl uh, glad tidings. And behold, thou, let me get turned here, and thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak unto the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believe not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. He had doubt and unbelief in his heart because of the circumstances of what he saw. How many of you are missing out on a blessing because you just can't see it? It's not that it can't happen. It's that you can't see it and God wants to do it through your life and just like this, because of that, it cost Him not to be able to speak. Say, okay, I'm going to make you a believer. You're going to be dumb. You're not going to be able to speak until all these things be fulfilled. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. Why did they marvel that it took so long in the temple? Because he should have been able to have came out much sooner. So this wasn't just simply a few words that were spoken there was some time that was spent here, and but he had doubt and unbelief in his heart. He's like, how's this going to work? I don't understand. Well, you know, I shared this with you before. When I was still driving a truck and I was driving over the road, I knew who I was in Christ. I knew what God had called me to be in Christ, but yet I didn't see the fulfillment of it, but I would share with people. I would share with him, you know, God's called me to be a minister. God's called me to preach. And they would look at me, you are an over-the-road truck driver. How's that going to work? You know what I'd tell them? <laughs> I don't know. It just is. It just is. Not because I was believing in a wish and a dream. No, because I was believing in what God had already shown me and called me to before I ever got there. Amen? Because I was faithful. Amen? Mary Beth and I was faithful to the point when we married... We were faithful to God. We were dedicated to the Lord before we ever came together. And but guess what? We are together and we are working towards that same goal of seeing other people's lives change for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. 
And sometimes even our own children. Amen. I was able to have my oldest son with me yesterday and his wife, and we had such a wonderful time. But you know, we need to be daddy sometimes, and we just need to be there to love our kids. You know, don't jam Jesus down people's throats. Just love them. Just love them. Amen. Just had to say that. Just love them. Praise the Lord. My kids, I got to tell you this. Ross was in the van. We had a whole van full last night, actually. And uh, for those of you that have ever heard me on the telephone, I answer the phone apparently the same way. And uh, Ross loves to make fun of me. And I'm like, Hi, how are you? How did I do on that? Good. Was that good? Ross did that last night in the van. I'm telling you, I thought we were going to have a laugh attack. Everybody was just to, just to let, and you know what? It was fun. Even though it was at my expense, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that because I love my kids. And it was good to have them all together and laughing. Praise God. Back to the message here, though. Zacharias, he doubted. He just didn't know how this was going to work. And when it came, uh, when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. Now I'm going to skip on down here a little bit because in this here, when he come out, you know, he had to actually get somebody to give him a writing pad so that he could write because he couldn't speak anymore. He finally had to get them, you know, here, this is what I want to say. How would you like to have this for the next many months of being able to write instead of say something of what your mind is thinking and you can't get it out? But in 26, verse 26 here, we find out that it says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now this here in Isaiah in chapter 7 and verse 14, we find out that there was prophetic words that the prophet spoke. And he says this, he says, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call His name Emmanuel. We know that the word Emmanuel means God with us. Okay? This here was the prophetic Scripture being fulfilled, but Gabriel once again gets sent to Mary at this. And you see, the lineage in which had to take place, David, the lineage of David, Joseph was in the lineage of David, Mary was in the lineage of David, and we find out that the Christ child was coming through the lineage of David. Even though that Mary had never known a man, yet this here came through the lineage of David. Verse 28, it says, And the angel came unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Now I heard some teaching this week, and you know, we, we think today whenever that young girls get a spouse, I'm not going to say how young she was. She was young. Younger than what we would probably think in that. In fact, this week, she could have been all the way down from 12 to 13 or 14 years old when she was a spouse to Joseph at this. So we're not talking about somebody who's 16, 18, 20. We're talking about somebody young. But she had already been highly favored of God. Why is that? Because she was faithful to God. It's important for us to be faithful to God at whatever stage of life that we are at. Yes, we have all sinned. Yes, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But whenever that He has revealed to us His truth and we begin to follow Him, let us follow Him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our might, that we might honor God in everything that we do. But you see, Mary, this angel came and as He was delivering the message to her and when she saw Him, she was troubled at His sayings and cost, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. She was wondering, I don't quite get this yet. What, what does this mean? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, 
For thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Wow. You know, that's why at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. At the name of Jesus, the devils have to submit because whenever the, the disciples went out and they ministered and they ministered through the name or through Christ, guess what? They had to submit because it was His power, it was His authority that they were operating in. If you think you're operating in your own power and your own authority, you're fooling nobody but yourself. And the devil is just laughing at you because he knows he's got you. But whenever that we submit ourselves to the power and authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can see mighty things happen. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne, give him the throne of his father David. And, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Well, guess what? There shall be no end to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There will be no end to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, if you turn with me there to Isaiah in chapter 9, this stems from that verse there. Isaiah chapter 9, and this kind of stems off of verse 33. But I'm going to read this to you. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the in, uh, increase of his government and peace, Shall, uh, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord ha uh, of hosts will perform this. We're seeing even here the prophetic aspect in the Old Testament speaking what the angel here has already proclaimed to Mary in this. But you know what? There still can be. Is it wrong to have questions in our minds? Is it wrong to maybe not understand? No. There's nothing. There wasn't anything wrong with what Zacharias did, but he doubted. It wasn't the question aspect. He just doubted and did not believe. But you know, as we go on here and we see, and then Mary said, verse 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I, am not, uh, I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Wow. So Elizabeth is already six months pregnant at this point. The angel is revealing this unto her, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. If I don't get anything else across today, just go home with the understanding nothing is impossible with God. Amen. You may be in an impossible circumstance, but yet all things are possible through God. Why can I say that? How can I say that? Because God says that. We just have to believe Him. We just have to trust Him for these areas of our lives to where we can't see the door. He'll make a door. Amen. He'll open up the door to where that no man can shut it and He'll shut the doors in which no man can open. But you know what? God will make a way. Amen. He'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Because with God all things are possible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. She had doubt or questions. I shouldn't say doubt. She had questions of how that it was going to happen. But the bottom line with it, she said, You know what? Hey, here I am. 
Let it be as done that you have said to me. Yes, amen. How many of us here today can honestly say, okay, we're willing to say, all right, Lord. You know, that can be scary. Do you realize that? Can, because if you really believe it, that can be scary because you're opening yourself up to God doing something with you that maybe you weren't expecting. How many of you would like to have that happen? I've had that happen in my life. Amen. 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 I've had that happen. He's a good God. Yes, He is a good God. And yet we sometimes doubt. And that's why that God can't do some of the miraculous through us the way that He wants right. is because we're not believing. That's right. <clears throat> We're just simply not trusting in His Word. Now I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of this right in here because Mary gets up at that point. She goes to her cousin Elizabeth and she gets to where that Elizabeth is at in verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutations of Mary, in other words, Mary goes when she gets to Elizabeth and Elizabeth, you are not going to believe what has happened to me. You're just not going to believe this. But let me share it with you. This angel came down and this angel was talked to and said that I was the chosen one to be able to birth forth the Christ child and I wasn't sure how it was all going to happen, but I believe it. I just got to sing. Amen. Oh yes, the answer's on the way. This I know. My Jesus said it. I believe it and it's so. My heavenly Father knows the need before we and you can rest assured the answer's on the way. You gotta say one again. Oh yes, the answer's on the way. This I know. I Jesus said I believe it, and it's so. My heavenly Father knows the need before we pray. And you can rest assured the answer's on the way. And the answer was on the way. It was coming through the Christ child. Amen. Jesus. It was coming through Jesus. And you see, this here, as she began to share this, all of a sudden Elizabeth is listening to what Mary is saying, and it says, And the babe leaped in her womb. This was John. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And uh, whence is this that... that to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me. She knew exactly who was in Mary's womb. Amen. It was time to worship because how is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as that the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ear, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. John leap for joy in Elizabeth's womb. Now you know what? Some people are going to think this is nuts. Guess what? Go ahead. Think that. But you know, I'm going to, I'm going to share this story. Some of you already know this story. Little Noel. Well, I can't say Little Noel anymore. He is taller than I am now. 14 years old. Going to be 15 in January 31st. And you know what? He's now taller than I am. Three weeks ago, he wasn't there yet. But I want you to know, whenever that he was in his mama's womb, when he was in Mary Beth's womb, I was preaching down at Brother Williams' church in Kansas City. I think you remember, all of you remember Brother Williams. He's been here to preach for you when I've been gone. Well, guess what? I was at his church, and that was 15 years ago. And as I was preaching, Mary was sitting somewhere over kind of where she's at now, and little Noel was just doing this in her tummy because he was hearing his daddy's voice. He was knowing what was going on even while he was in his mother's womb. You see, because all of our children, if we would really understand it, God has a plan and a purpose for them. Yes. Amen. You see, God had a plan and a purpose for Noel when he came into this life. Even before that, even in his name, the Lord spoke it to Mary. We had been going over, what, what are we going to name him? You know, And she would call me on the phone because I was out on the road. And, you know, what, what do you think about this? I'm like, no. Oh, no, I don't think so. And, and you know, all of a sudden, one day, Mary calls me and she says, Robert, the Lord has spoken to my heart. I had to get up and I had to write it down on a piece of paper so I wouldn't forget it. And she called me and she said, the Lord said his name is Noah Wyatt. Ding! Guess what? 
When she told me that's his name in my heart, that, that's his name, I knew it. I knew it. That's before he's ever born. Why is that? Because we need to be connected with the Spirit so that we can know the will of God. Because there's a plan for all of our lives. We just need to submit to it. Okay, back to the message. I thought I was on my message. Somebody help keep me on track by saying amen or something. Amen. You know, these stories are important sometimes too, but I like to stay focused on the Word. But these things happen. They're not something that we've made up. They are something because of the faith that we have maintained in God that He brings these things to pass. And that's what happened to Mary here. There's a whole list of what goes on even after this. Behold, or, uh, blessed is she that believed, believed, for there shall be a performance of these things which were told of her from the Lord. It goes on, and I mean different things here that Elizabeth is speaking and saying. But all of a sudden, she goes back when the time was right. And now we get back to where that Zacharias comes back into the scene. I want to get to that point. Because whenever that we see here, I'm going to pick up in verse 57 there. It says, Now Elizabeth is full time come that she should be delivered. And she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how that the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called his name Zacharias after the name of his father. Okay, now I want to stop here just for a minute because this is important. You see, they were going by the tra uh, tradition or the law of what God had given that the circumcision for a young male should be on the eighth day. There's a whole litany of things that go on in this, but even how that on the eighth day there is something in the blood system that causes it to coagulate so that the blood will stop flowing easier, and before that, it's not. They probably didn't know why, but they just knew God told them at that time it's on the eighth day. Science has shown and proven that this here is what happens on that significant day after that a young male is born. So they go, they're going to do this, and they're going, oh, how would you like for your neighbors to name your kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody named them Sue. I remember that song. But you know what? Elizabeth didn't go with that. They're like, no, no. This child's name is going to be John. Wait. Why are you naming him John? There, there's nobody in your tribe. There's nobody in your people. There's nobody even around you that their name is John. Well, that, that's what the angels said to name it, so that's what we're going to name it. We're going to name it John. You know, that brings me up to a whole other point, is there's people that are going to try to get you to go this way whenever the God says, I want you to go that way. So are we to obey God or man? We're going to obey God. But you see, they wanted to name him something else whenever that God had already said his name's going to be John. In verse 61, it says, And they said unto her, There is none of thy kins, uh, kindred that is called his name. And they um, made signs to his father how that he would have him called. And he asked for a writing tablet and, and wrote, saying, His name is John. They were in unity in this, and they marveled all, and his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. Well, guess what? That should get somebody's attention. The poor guy hadn't talked for nine months, but now all of a sudden, whenever he said his name's John, the angel said, when it's fulfilled, you can talk again. Wow. 
And you see, it was fulfilled even in his obedience. No, his name's John. That's what it's going to be. But you know what? Even here we see how that Zacharias gets involved in the aspect of being filled with the Spirit. Verse um, 66, pick back up with me there. And all they that heard them lay, uh, laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And he had on... Uh, and the hand of the Lord was on him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed His people and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in, in the house of His servant David, as He spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets which hath been sent. The world began or since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Well, I want to tell you, the devil hates you and he's your enemy. Amen. 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 And we're going to be saved from that hand of our enemy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Moving on down there to verse 37, though, because he does say quite a bit. I'm trying to move through some of this. But in verse 76, and it says, And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt be go before the face of the Lord to prepare His way. In Malachi, there again, chapter 3, verse 1, it says this. This is a place to where this prophecy is fulfilled. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to His temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, He shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. This was John the Baptist. He went preaching and proclaiming righteousness. He preached repentance. Yeah. He would have those religious leaders who were so pious come out there, look at them and say, Oh, you brood of vipers who have warned you of the wrath to come. I think we need to say some of that to some religious pious people today. I'm sorry, i got to be bold. Amen? Because that's what's happening is that you know what the church is the preachers aren't standing up preaching the way that they really need to they became so pious in how that they speak and the way that they I hope I look nice today too but if I don't my tie gets a little off I'm not going to worry about it amen because you know what God is the one that is being glorified here and if I have to be a fool for my Lord so be it amen but as long as the message gets out Amen. Amen. Mary, Elizabeth, Zacharias, John, in all of this here, the fulfillment that takes place in Luke in chapter 1. Luke is wanting us to know that these things can be made assured. That's why I bring some of the aspects of the prophecies to light here. One of the things that I do want to mention in closing today is this. Because you know what? The angel Gabriel that came, he came speaking the Word of the Lord. He came preaching and proclaiming to the message, the message in which he gave to these individuals were messages that were already spoken in the Old Testament and proclaimed. But what he said was nothing against what the Word of God had to say. It's important that we understand that in the New Testament that Paul speaks and addresses this in Galatians in chapter 1, <coughs> that you know, even though an angel might come and speak to us, if it is not what God has already thus saith the Lord said, we don't want to listen to it. We don't want to have to listen even give to that because in verse 6 of chapter 1 Paul tells us this he says I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another I find that remarkable right there it's not it's not really another but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ they would pervert the truth of what his message really is but Paul goes on and he says, but though we 
or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have had preached unto you, let him be accursed. Verse 9, As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. That word breaks down to anathema, which means cursed. We need to know that what is spoken and if anything or what we hear or what we see is telling us something else, we can't listen. We have got to stay true to the Word of God and we have got to stay focused on that to where that the truth is what sets us free. Amen. How many of you have been set free by the truth of the Word of God today? God. The enemy is always, just as Johnny said, the enemy is always going to be out there trying to woo you or trick you or get you away from the truth. But the truth remains the truth. Amen. Amen. You see, God loves us and He loves every one of us that is here today. Amen. He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe upon Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life eternal. But without Jesus, we have no hope. Without Jesus, we have no security in our salvation. Amen. You can be a good person and have all the good amenities of life, but yet life without Christ is empty and you're still just as lost as the worst sinner that you might be Amen. without Christ. If Johnny comes forward today and Sherry and leads us in song, if you're here today and you've been challenged by this message, inspired by this message, take this time to press in, to seek God, and to draw closer to Him. Let your light so shine that the world might see the love of Christ flowing through you. In Jesus' name.